So welcome to this short video, which outlines our most recent paper published in gastrointestinal endoscopy on the economic impact of implementing an optical diagnosis with a resect and discard strategy within the English Bowel Cancer Screening Programme, findings from the DISCARD-3 study. I'm Professor Brian Saunders, Professor of Endoscopy at St. Mark's Hospital, and my co-authors uh, are Amir Ahmad, who's Senior Research Fellow at St. Mark's Hospital, and Martina Orlovich, who is a Research Fellow in Economic Analysis at Imperial College. And this study uh, looks at the economic potential economic advantages of a resect and discard strategy using the data from the discard three study. The concept of, of optical diagnosis has been with us for some time, and it has potential major economic and green uh, endoscopy benefits. Just to give us a little bit of background, Amir, can you give us a, an overview of the discard three study? Yes, so the discard free study was a prospective feasibility study. It involved eight bowel cancer screening colonoscopists that completed a validated optical diagnosis training module and then performed optical diagnosis on uh, all polyps that were up to 10 millimeters in size. They photo documented with white light and narrowband imaging and then assigned a high or low competence optical diagnosis. Um, and the polyps were all sent for histology as standard, and surveillance intervals were then derived. Great. And 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 what in terms of the uh, the final determinant of success of optical diagnosis, it's really the surveillance interval concordance. How how, how what what happened with that? What were the results of that? Yeah. So in terms of the the uh, the threshold that needed to be surpassed for uh, implementation of optical diagnosis in practice, this we used the PIBI threshold that there needed to be ninety percent or greater concordance between the optical diagnosis derived surveillance interval and the histology derived surveillance interval, and we found that uh, this uh, threshold was surpassed. Uh, when using uh, a small polyp or a diminutive and small polyp optical diagnosis approach. And was that for, for, for all guidelines or just uh, British Society of Gastroenterology guidelines? So for the for the British, uh, European and American guidelines, the 90% threshold was exceeded for a diminutive polyp optical diagnosis approach. But for um, when using a small polyp optical diagnosis approach with the British and European guidelines, it was exceeded, but not the American guidelines. So just to clarify, our Bowel Cancer Screening Centre covers a population of about 1.1 million people. There are eight uh, accredited colonoscopists. The DISCARD-3 study was run over a one-year period. How, Amir, how many patients were seen in that time period? Um, so, so in that time period, we had uh, 565 patients were invited and uh, 525 were included in the study. Okay, that's great. So, I mean, the whole point of doing op optical diagnosis is to try and streamline the process of removing polyps and uh, establishing patients on a surveillance program. It's cutting out additional outpatient appointments and, of course, the cost of histopathology. And it has a huge green impact as well, potentially, because you're reducing the amount of uh, histopathology being performed. So the economics of it are absolutely crucial. So Martina, tell us about the current study and how uh, how we did the analysis. Thank you. <clears throat> so to do the economic analysis, we have designed a decision tree to compare uh, resect and discard strategy with a standard histopathology for a patient undergoing bowel cancer screening. Uh, the model adopts the perspective of the NHS England, and the main outcomes of interest that were observed were uh, healthcare costs and also the surveillance interval assignment. We basically did a two subgroup analysis, one including diminutive polyps and the other um, small polyps. And moving forward, I mean, what, what, what were the key findings fr from the economic analysis? So uh, based on our results, we have found that a resect and discard is a cost saving option without compromising uh, healthcare outcomes. Um, when looking at a cohort that is included in a discard three, we found that um, for diminutive polyps, direct uh, healthcare savings were around 36,000 pounds. And if that is extended to include also the small polyps, this goes to 42,000 pounds. 
So, Martina, by running an optical diagnosis uh, policy, we would have we saved. Exactly. So on these 525 patients and looking small polyps, we saved £42,000. And we proved in Discard 3 that it can be done safely without disadvantaging patients in terms of surveillance interval determination. So, so what, we've, what we can then do is, is uh, translate that to the entire English bowel cancer screening programme. Um, the uh, English population is around 50 million people. And if it was applied across the whole of England, we're talking about millions of pounds in saving. Yes, the impact would be substantial if a reset and discard strategy was extrapolated to the level of the English bowel cancer screening programme. Uh, with a diminutive optical diagnosis strategy, the savings with a reset and discard strategy would be £4.4 million annually. Uh, and even after taking into account the cost of a quality assurance programme, this would be £2.4 million annually. And if you uh, used a small polyp optical diagnosis approach, that's polyps up to 10 millimetres in size, a resect and discard strategy saving would be £5.3 million annually. Uh, and after taking into account the quality assurance programme, it would be £3.4 million annually. I mean, you're an expert in economic analysis, Martina. Working out the cost is complicated. What, what were the key costs involved? We have only looked at the direct cost of uh, undergoing through the bowel cancer screening program. So the direct costs that are reimbursed for a particular patient that is receiving this service. What we didn't look is the additional costs that a system bears when managing these patients. For example, if there is an additional histopathologist time includes or additional administrative time include in managing these patients. So I would say that the costs that we presented in this study are conservative and the real cost saving for the system would probably be even greater. And I think we, we worked out that um, our histopathologists spend about a third of their time looking at these diminutive and small polyps. So this would free them up to do, do uh, other types of work, such as looking at bigger polyp resection and or cancer resections. And this is true, certainly very true in the United Kingdom. We have a, a chronic shortage of uh, histo specialist histopathologists. Um, and often histopathology work is outsourced at, at extreme cost. So freeing up our existing workforce to be able to look at more important lesions such as large polyps or cancers would, would make it a very profound economic uh, difference to the system. If I may add, um, so in our study with conversation with the histopathologist, we found that on average 20 minutes uh, of their time is needed for the histopathology assessment. So if we take this time and the amount of, um, of polyps that did not need it to be reviewed uh, if the resect and discard is applied, we actually calculated that if we only look at diminutive polyps, they would actually save 3,640 working days, while if we look at the small polyps, this would even extend to 3,836 working days. And as you're saying, this is a valuable time that they can use in, in places uh, where the resources are currently lacking. So Amir, what are the additional costs in terms of, of, of running a resect and discard optical diagnosis strategy? So the key additional costs would be implementing a quality assurance program, and that uh, was proposed in the original discard free study. And this would involve ensuring that there is a training process, but also a quality assurance process to monitor performance of endoscopists, um, which we uh, feel should be overseen by an optical diagnosis champion. Uh, and so this has been costed um, uh, within the study. So Martina, what exactly does this involve in terms of personnel and time? So the personnel needs for quality uh, uh, assurance process includes one day per week of specialist screening practitioner, which is a band six nurse in the NHS, and also half a day per week of consultant time, which we um, assume to be an uh, NHS consultant with at least four years completed as a working consultant. So, so the total cost of actually implementing the programme comes to, to what sort of what sort of a figure per, per year within bowel cancer screening in, in an individual centre? On the level on the bowel cancer screening, it amounted it amounted at a round of one point nine million pounds. 
But even after accounting for that, the potential cost savings of resect and discard strategy are far greater than this. So definitely Im implementing resect and discard also with the quality assurance process is worthwhile for the system. So in this study, despite some increased costs to running an optical diagnosis, resect and discard strategy, the cost savings are still very significant. And we think that this can be rolled out across the whole of the English bowel cancer screening programme, given the high quality of the colonoscopists within that programme and the ability to quality assure it. Potentially, this will then be a draw to introduce optical diagnosis into general wider practice with even more significant cost savings. And we hope that this will also be applicable to internationally to other bowel cancer screening and colonoscopy services. So certainly in the United Kingdom, the demand for colonoscopy continues to increase and our ability to perform colonoscopy with efficiency and in a cost-effective way is extremely important. So we hope that this encourages you to consider an optical diagnosis, resect and discard strategy and take into account the tremendous economic benefits.